we're live. Okay, so <clears throat> strong on weak acids. Now, I'm sure you've heard of these. Okay, um, let's have a look at a strong acid. HCl is a strong acid. Okay, and it dissociates to H plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. All right, now let's have a look at weak acid. Uh, a weak acid would be something called ethanoic acid, which is this. Let me do that one a bit nicer, eh? Because this is it's worth doing that one nicely. All right, so this is a strong acid. And what that means is, um, I'm sure you will know, the degree of dissociation is is 100%. Yeah, I know, Zara. It's amazing, isn't it? All right. Do we not, do we understand Ronaldo's bit this week? Because he loves him. Yeah, that's very good. Ronaldo, you'd think he'd be at Man U, wouldn't you? But he's here. Right. So the degree of dissociation is 100%. Do we know what that means? Do we know this? If you have a degree of dissociation of, of 100%, we class this as a strong acid. Okay. Anyone want to say anything about that? Are you okay with that? Are we good with that? Anyone, anyone, anyone? Well, it's nice if someone... Oh, that's a good point. All right, now, good point, Zara. If you've got a hydrogen chloride, yeah, this is the uh, molecule, this is the H, and there's the Cl, and it splits up into H+, plus, okay, and Cl-. minus. Okay, oh, that's pretty good, actually. That worked out well. Cl minus. So this reaction, first of all, this reaction is known as a dissociation. Dissociation. Now, a dissociation is basically a splitting up. All right, this is a splitting up. So that's a dissociation. Are we happy with that concept so far? All right, so this is just that reaction. So do we understand that concept so far? Anyone? Zara? Anyone? Yes, Zara's good. All right, now, if I had a hundred of these okay how many hydrogen ions would i get i would get a hundred of those and a hundred of those in other words very simply all of them all of them split up okay so a hundred percent of them split so we say there is full dissociation does that make sense does that make sense? So if I have a hundred of these, oh, the Nizim, Nizim's here. All right. So if I had a hundred of these guys, all right, I'd get a hundred of these and a hundred of these, and that's what we mean by full dissociation, or uh, we say they dissociate completely. So they dissociate completely. That's what we mean by 100% dissociation. Are we good with that? I hope that makes sense. We're going to come back to this idea in a minute. All right, now let's have a look at a weak acid. These are, this is a strong acid, but a weak acid, okay? Well, if a strong acid, the, the uh, definition of a strong acid is complete dissociation, okay? A weak acid, the definition of that would be partial dissociation. I hope that makes sense to you all. All right. Now, let's have a look at weak acid. A weak acid is one we use in organic chemistry. Let's have a look at a nice simple one. This is ethanoic acid. So there's ethanoic acid. It's a funny looking thing. Okay. Now, what one do you think here in this molecule? This is ethanoic acid. You'll be learning about this next term. What molecule is the, uh, sorry, what hydrogen is the one that leaves, do you think? Have a guess. What hydrogen leaves that? Because an acid has to have a hydrogen leave. So which one do you think it's going to be? Anyone, anyone, anyone? No, I can say <laughs> we're not as, yeah, the one bond is in the oxygen. Yeah, exactly, this one. Now, this one here is the one that's going to leave. And so this one is known as the acidic. God, my pen's not working today at all. This one is called the acidic proton because it's the one that's the one that leaves. It's the one that leaves. Okay, so when this splits up, what we get is this. We get, oh, let me turn it in green. We get this. Okay, and there the O minus and the H plus. 
Okay, so that split sum. Now, the interesting thing about this one, if I have a hundred of these molecules, okay, if it was strong, I'd get a hundred of these, but I don't get a hundred of those, okay? We, oopsie daisy, if I had a hundred of these, we get about five of these and five of these, okay? So what happens here is, well, some of them dissociate, but then some of these five and the H pluses go back the other way to reform the acid. So this one, we put a reversible reaction sign. So this, if it's an arrow like this, it means we have a strong acid. But if we have a reversible reaction sign, it's a weak acid. Okay, and as I say, if I have 100 of these ethanoic molecules, ethanoic acid molecules, maybe five will split up. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So this one, I'm getting a bit pushed up here. This one is um, a partial. This one has partial dissociation. And because it has partial dissociation, we call it a weak acid. Okay, and the degree, this is a bit above our pay grade, but the degree of dissociation in this case is we say it's five percent because for every hundred we only get five but for a strong acid it's a hundred percent dissociation are we all good are we all good with that there's a lot of consequences for this and it's very interesting but we're good so far yes Zara is the only one playing today who else have we got here all right eric is good as well i'm looking at all of you we've got Cristiano. we've got Arivumati, we've got Nassim, Tamia, we've got Teo, Wanjing, and we've got Zara. Yeah, there's not that many today, is there? Omo, Omo, Omolemo as well, we have we have Omolemo. All right, but please, guys, keep awake, otherwise we'll all fall asleep, won't we? So that's what degree of dissociation means. So let's move this up, okay, and let's have a look. What does, it, what does that mean, then? Okay, so on the left, I'm going to be my strong acid. Oops, let's see. This is my strong acid on the left. And on the right, I'm going to look at a weak acid. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So the strong acid, I'm going to pick, um, let me pick HCl aqueous. And this splits up into H plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. The weak acid is CH3. This is my ethanoic acid aqueous. A reversible reaction sign ch3 co2 minus aqueous plus h plus aqueous now as i said before if i have a hundred of these i'll get a hundred of those and a hundred of those and if i have a hundred of those i'll only get five of those and five of those yeah now this is the clever bit here okay if and now try and follow this because this isn't easy if the concentration of H HCl, the hydrochloric acid, is one mole per decimeter cubed, oops, per decimeter cubed, since all of it dissociates, the concentration of hydrogen ions will be one mole per decimeter cubed. Do we follow that? If the concentration of acid is one mole per decimeter cubed, the concentration of hydrogen ions will also be one mole per decimeter cubed, because this is important. Zara gets it, so we're good. Now, duh, 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 duh. if we have one mole per decimeter cubed of ethanoic acid, what will the concentration of hydrogen ions be? In this case, anyone, 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 anyone. Duh, duh, duh. Anyone, anyone, anyone. Everyone's very quiet. I can tell you're all sleepy. I'm tired as well today. We won't we won't keep us too long today because I think everyone's knackered. No, it won't. Um, Wenjing, it won't be because it's got to follow this. So almost <laughs> almost zero. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I'm afraid. All right, who's here? Yuran Chen is here. He can come in. All right. So. Look, it's 5%, isn't it? So if I have one mole of this, it's going to be 0 0.05. Oh, moles. I've done it in the wrong place, haven't I? So let me change that. Yes, Zara, well done. It's going to be that, isn't it? Zara, yeah, no, well done. 0 0.05 mole per decimeter cube. Now, the point is, 
So the concentration of the acid is the same. The conch of the acid is the same, but the concentration conch of hydrogen ions is different. This one is 1, and this one is 0 0.05, even though that is the same. Do we follow that? Do we get that? You can have a concentration of acid and a concentration of hydrogen ions. Okay, so crazy but true. The concentration of HCO is one. The concentration of the ethanoic acid is one. All right, but what's the? But that doesn't mean that's the concentration of hydrogen ions. The concentration of hydrogen ions is only one for the strong acid because it dissociates fully, and for the weak acid. Uh, it's 0 0.05 moles per decimeter cube. Now, what are the consequences of that? There's loads of consequences. All right. Now, first of all, give me a beaker here. Okay, there's a nice beaker. And there's a nice beaker here. Okay. So, on the this side, there's my water. Oh, it's not very good, is it? Oh, I don't know what happened there. There's the water. And there's the water. Okay, and this is HCl. And the concentration of the HCl is one mole per decimeter cubed. Concentration of my ethanoic acid, or weak acid, is one mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, now, exactly, the negative ion from ethanoic acid. What exactly is the other part called next hydrogen? This thing, that thing, this is called the ethan, ethan O8 iron okay like this is called the chloride iron okay this is ethanoic acid so there's the hydrogen ion and that's called the ethanoate ion this thing here all right it's a good question all right now let's pretend they're both one molar which one will have more hydrogen ions in the hcl or the weak acid Even though the same acid concentration, exactly, it's, all, it's an easy game. So I'm going to draw those like this. All right. These are my hydrogen ions. I'm just going to draw them like that. Okay, so these guys, H+. plus. Uh, I've used these things to represent my H pluses. Okay, and here, the H pluses, I'm going to use these things again. The hydrogen ion concentration is lower. Okay, so this is my strong acid, and this is my weak acid. But the whole point is the concentration of the acids themselves is the same. But the concentration, and now if you remember, we use these square brackets to mean concentration. The concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed of the strong acid, but the concentration of hydrogen ions over here is 0 0.05 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, so... What are the consequences for that then? All right, so strong acids. It, now, you've got to compete. You've got to uh, play fairly here because the whole idea is if the concentrations are the same. All right, so if we now we measure the pH of a strong acid, if the concentration is one molar, the pH of HCl would be something like three, but the pH of um, ethanoic acid would be about six. Okay. So there you go. That's one consequence. If I put a piece of magnesium in here, okay, and a piece of magnesium in here, which one is going to get bombarded quicker by the magnesium? Sorry, by the hydrogen ions. Which one? The strong acid or the weak acid? Now I'm going to give Zara a break here. Yeah, because, yeah, the strong acid. So you're going to get, now what, I'm going to use these, you're going to get more bubbles. Many more bubbles in the strong acid than in the weak acid. Okay, so um, plus mg, we're going to get lots of bubbles, vigorous effervescence, we'd call that. And if I add mg to this, we get little, little bubbles. Okay, anything else we can do? Um, well, if we add a carbonate to each of them, all right, let's add sodium carbonate to both of them. Which one are we going to get more bubbles again of carbon dioxide? Well, we're going to get more bubbles here, more and then less. And all because of a consequence of the strongness or the weakness of the acid. Does that make sense? 
Does that make sense? Excellent. Now, in chemistry, strong means dissociated. Okay, so I can have a swimming pool. Okay, have a look at this. This is a swimming pool. All right, of water. Okay, and I can add two drops to the swimming pool of HCl. Okay, it is very, very, very dilute but it is still strong. Does that make sense, all of you? That's quite a hard concept. Strong doesn't mean the concentration. Strong just means the degree of dissociation. Okay, so if I can do that, and I can have a tiny, tiny thimble, okay, a tiny beaker, there's a tiny beaker, and in it, I can have 10 mole per decimeter cubed. In other words, very concentrated ethanoic acid. Okay. And it is still weak. Okay. So the, the take home message is dilution is not the same as strength in acids. Okay, now, <clears throat> yeah, I know, so everyone gets confused by that, seriously. All right, now let's make a, oh, don't forget, on the left, we've got a strong acid. Okay, all right, here we are, uh, we've got the strong acid, and we've got the weak acid here. All right, so this is strong, and this is the weak. Okay, and I'm going to, as I did last time, I'm going to put some uh, magnesium in both of them. Okay, and this one's got loads of hydrogen ions. There's the surface, and there's the surface, and this one's got a few hydrogen ions. Okay, now this is a clever thing here. I'm going to draw a graph now. I'm going to use this weird thing. Okay, this is clever. All right, I can move it like that, move it down. All right, and I can draw a nice line. All right, it's a bit of a faff, I must admit. I wish it toggled, but it doesn't toggle. You have to just do this. You have to rotate the, the mouse wheel. Okay, and I'm going to move it like that. Okay, that's a bit ugly, but there you go. Uh, let's put it about here. Okay, and I'm going to draw a graph. There. Not a perfect graph, but there you go. And I'm going to get rid of that thing. All right, uh, so on the bottom here is time in seconds. And on the top is volume of hydrogen gas in centimeters cubed. All right. Now, as you all know, if I do this, um, I'm going to get the strong ones. The reaction is going to be fast at the start. It's going to slow down and it's going to come off like that. And this is for, let's say, five grams of magnesium. And this is also five grams of magnesium. Now, in both cases, the acid is in excess on that side and the acid is in excess on the other side now this is the one that i've drawn at the moment this is the strong acid okay what would the weak acid look like anyone compared to the strong acid no one's going to say are you chicken i think what would the um, the weak acid look like? It would be less steep. That's true. Okay. That's one thing. That's only... All right. What... Where would it stop? Where is it going to stop? No, Eric. That's what everyone thinks. No, no. It's going to do this. It's going to be slower. But it will get there in the end. Okay. Why is it going to give us the same volume? Well, because we use the same amount, okay, and the acid was in excess. In other words, all the magnesium will get used up, and therefore the same volume of hydrogen will be evolved, okay? It will just take longer to do it, but it will get there eventually. This is a hard concept, 
okay because students think ah it's not going to give as much hydrogen it will it will just take longer to do it all right does that make sense yeah now these are the things that look so the a star things you've got to look out for they it will be slower but it will eventually give it so are we all good with that if the acid is not in excess what would happen then well if everything else is the same let's say the uh, magnesium is in excess if we'd have to have the same amount of acid in other words on this side we'd have to have 200 centimeters cubed of one molar hcl and if on this side we had 200 centimeters cubed of one molar ethanoic acid then we've got the same amount of acid the number of moles n of acid is the same as the number of moles of acid here okay so if the acid was not in excess this would be what we call the limiting reagent all right and so is this the limiting reagent so we'd get the same graphs okay one thing or the other is in excess this is quite a tricky subject eh? all right are we good with that all right so these are the consequences of having a strong and a weak acid yeah it's interesting right? well i think it's kind of interesting all right so let's move that up now another interesting thing let's have a look at this this is a nasty question as well but i'm sure you'll get it you'll get this have a look at this on the left we're going to have a strong acid and on the right well sorry guys we're going to have a strong acid on the left, we're going to have HCl, and on the right, we're going to have sulfuric acid. Now, the concentration of the strong acid on the left, I'm going to say is one mole per decimeter cubed, and the concentration of the acid on the right is one mole per decimeter cubed. Yeah, I'm going to stick a little bit of magnesium in this one, and a little bit of magnesium in this one, and again, the acid is in excess okay i'm going to draw put the water in there and now i'm going to draw another graph this will see if everyone's been listening okay and there this is the volume um, of hydrogen in centimeters cubed and this is time all right now i'm going to do the hcl one first Okay, this is the HCl. All right, this is my HCl. They're both strong. What would the sulfuric acid look like, anyone? Could be the same. They're both the same strength, both strong. Strong acid HCl, strong acid sulfuric. They're both strong. They've got the same concentration. Everything's the same. Concentration's the same. The strength is the same. They're both strong. You can't say one is stronger than the other because they're both 100% ionization or dissociation, I should say. Anyone want to guess? Could be... And, they're both the same. That could be an answer. Anyone? Tricky stuff. Will the line be the same as the HCL one? Is that your guess, Wenjing? Yeah, okay, that's a good guess. Anyone else want to guess before I tell you what's going to happen? Anyone? Someone be brave. Come on, Eric, be brave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eric doesn't know. It does seem to make sense, doesn't it? About the same. They do the same. It would. Well done. Sulfuric acid. And by the way, we spell sulfuric like this these days. We don't spell it like you. Sulfuric acid will be faster. And then it will come down to the same level. So this is the sulfuric and this is my HCL. Does anyone know why? Anyone would know why? This is a clever question. Uh, 
No one. Okay, let's move this up. Okay. It's a bit of a mean question, isn't it? It's a good question. Let's have a look at HCL. HCL, aqueous, splits up into H plus and Cl minus. H2SO4 splits up into 2H plus. Oops. Can you see why now? And let me do a different color, sulfate. If I have one mole, exactly, not just more. If I have one mole per decimeter cubed of high, uh, of this, what's the, what's the concentration of hydrogen ions here? It's one mole per decimeter cubed. And it is 100% dissociation. But if I have one mole per decimeter cubed of this, What's the concentration of hydrogen ions? Anyone? Da, 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 da. Exactly. So it's two moles per decimeter cubed because HCl is monoprotic and H2SO4 is diprotic. So if, even if they have the same concentration of the acid, concentration of hydrogen ions will be more than the concentration of the acid because the H2SO4 gives two hydrogen ions. Now, Zara says, what does that mean? What does mono mean, Zara? And what does di mean? One. Di means two. What do you think protic means? There we are, one proton, monoprotic, two protons, diprotic. Does that make sense? Not donating, it just, yeah, well, it means they donate. Uh, monoprotic acids donate one proton. Diprotic acids donate two protons. All right. And therefore, even, and the clever thing is, even though the concentration of the acid is the same, the concentration of the hydrogen ions is different. Are we okay with that? Everyone. Are we good? Are we good? It's clever stuff. Now I'm looking at the clock here. I, I just didn't want to keep you long tonight because it's. Uh, I think we're all tired, aren't we? But I was going to, I've got a question for you here. I looked up a question. All right, where is it here? Not that one. Let's have a look at this. Uh, which one is it? Oh, I've lost it now. Right. Mm -hmm. um, all right, there. This this is an easy one. Let's have a look at this first. All right. Oh, I don't know what's happened there. Oh, <laughs> something weird's happened. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm, I don't like it. It's going. All right. So let's try that. Oops. Copy that and paste this. Is that going to work? Yeah, there we are. Just a very quick question. All right, now, oh, we haven't done um, weak bases, have we? Right, very, very, very quickly, because I'm sure you're all tired. I'm tired. We're all tired. Okay, now, what's a weak base then? A strong base, very quickly. We won't be long, I promise you. A strong base is sodium hydroxide. And when this dissolves in water, you get sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Okay, and if you have a 100 of these, you get 100 sodium ions and 100 of these. So this fully dissociates. Okay. It's fully dissociates, so it is a strong base or a strong alkali. What makes it an alkali? This does. The fact that it's a soluble OH minus. That makes it an alkali. Okay. So let's have a look at a weak alkali. A weak alkali would be ammonia. Okay, and it reacts with water. Okay, it, oops, that's wrong, isn't it? So let me get rid of that. This is an equilibrium sign. You get the ammonium ion, okay, and you get OH minus. Okay, and what makes it an alkali? This does. This means it's an alkali, a soluble OH minus ion. Okay, now we can tell the top one is strong because we've got an arrow. So this one is strong and this one is weak because we have an equilibrium sign. So this only partially dissociates. 
Okay, this partially, and about, I don't know, 30%. It's not too bad, but it partially dissociates. Now, but we get OH minus ion, so it's an alkali. We get OH minus ion, so this is an alkali. But this bottom one partially dissociates. Does anyone, does anyone see something interesting about this one? Okay, you, you won't know it, I think, because you're tired. All right, but what's the test for ammonia? Anyone? So anyone know what the test for ammonia gas is? Yeah. So the interesting well done. Ari this is hard one for Arivumati. Is that right? I hope I said said that right. Right. Now you're right. It is litmus paper. Okay. And it is red because we want it to turn blue, don't we? But what's the first word of your both your answers? Exactly. And where's the damp in the equation? Anyone? This equation. Can you see it? Well, I don't know. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. But this is the damp. Okay. If the litmus paper isn't damp, you won't get these. If you don't get these, it's not an alkali. It needs the damp. Okay? So that's why we say damp. You've got to have the damp. Okay? So without the damp, it doesn't work because it needs the water to produce the OH minus ions. And if it doesn't produce the OH minus ions, it's not an alkali. So NH3 on its own isn't an alkali. It needs the damp. It needs the water to produce the OH minus ions. So if you put... Um, if you put litmus paper in uh, ammonia that's, and it's not damp, it won't change. Well, I thought that was interesting anyway. All right. So now, very quickly, let's see if we can do this question. What are the answers here? All right. So a weak base, ammonia solution, pH of a weak base. Anyone? Thanks, Zara. I know you're just being nice. But a weak base. What's the pH of a weak base? Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, that'll do. Ten. 9, 10, something like that, 9 or 10. All right, a strong acid. 3, we've dealt with that one and that one. A strong base. 13, well done. A sodium chloride solution, well done. <laughs> Dilute uh, acid. Dilute ethanoic acid, a weak acid. Oh, it's not going to be one. It will probably... Oh, sorry. I've messed that up, haven't I? Dilute HCl is probably going to be one. Okay. Now, uh, and this one is probably going to be three, isn't it? Because you, we, we didn't use these properly, did we? I hope that makes sense. I messed that up a bit, didn't I? Because uh, HCl can easily be... Oh, what's happened there? HCl can easily be have a pH of three, but that's another story. So there we go. All right, we're nearly done, guys. You've done very well. <laughs> I, feel, I feel for you. I do, seriously. All right, now we're going to copy that. Let's get rid of this rubbish. Put this on. There. Explain why solutions of HCl and ethanoic acid with the same concentration. All right. Oh, look at this. This, this and this have the same concentration, have different pHs. How would you answer that? Anyone want to guess that one? How would you answer that? Isn't three strong? No, Eric. It is kind of strong. But... Um, uh, it is kind of strong. I wouldn't have said three. I would have said five for ethanoic acid. But the, the options available kind of pushed us that way, didn't they? Anyway, does so anyone want to try and answer this very quickly? Explain why solutions of HCl and ethanoic acid with the same concentration, that's important, have different pHs. Let's answer it beautifully. Anyone? No one. I think everyone's tired. Right, so let me do this then. All right, let me answer it in red, okay? Hydrochloric, oh, let's have a look. It's a strong acid, and it's, huh? which has a, yeah, yeah, but that would probably, both of you, that would probably give you one mark, okay? So let me try and give get two marks. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. 
and ethanoic acid is weak at the same acid concentration the strong acid will have a higher concentration of what? Concentration of what? Anyone? The acid concentration isn't what gives us the pH. It's the concentration of what? Well done, hydrogen ions. So at the same concentration, uh, the strong acid will have a high concentration of hydrogen ions. And therefore, a lower pH. That will give us two any, any day. Uh, so hydrogen ions and pH have inverse proportion. Yes, they do. Are you, do you add maths by any chance? Ari, I'm just going to say Ari. Yeah, um, let's have a look. pH stands for minus log to the base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentrations. So as the hydrogen ions increase, the number decreases because of that is the minus log. Okay. Oh, okay, thanks, Eric. So yes, so as the hydrogen ion concentration increases, the pH actually gets more negative. All right. Okay, and that's how it works, I'm afraid. And believe it or not, it's crazy but true, you can get a pH of minus six and stuff. And this is very concentrated. Okay. What's the acid called? I can't remember. Fluoro. Let's see if I can remember it. You should look this up. Fluoroaminotic acid. Something like this. I can't remember exactly, but that's got a crazy pH. All right. Anyway, well done. Okay. Right now, where are we now? Um, this one. And the last one. Last one of the day because everyone's tired. All right. Get rid of that. Let's do this. Okay, how about this then? Measuring pH is one way of distinguishing between strong acids and weak acids. What's another way? How else could you do it? How else could you do it? And then we're going to call it a day. What could you do? You can measure the pH. But what else could you do? Anyone? Speed of your, oh, you've got to be more specific, Eric. It's a good answer. But you've got to be much more specific. Yeah, again, you've got to be more specific. You can't just say rate of reaction. What would you do to the two samples of acid? Be more specific, eh? What would you do? Add a metal. Well, not just any metal, though. If I added copper to them both, nothing would happen. So you have to add a special... Well, yeah, magnesium. I would use magnesium. So the method I would use is add magnesium oops my pen stopped working again magnesium ribbon to samples of both acids yeah everyone's getting it there yeah when using the same concentration both the same surface area yeah exactly that's why i'm saying magnesium ribbon eric so if we say magnesium ribbon we ensure the same surface area but that's a very good question Okay, now, again, uh, you're quite right. Um, both acids having the same concentration. Okay, words matter, eh? You've got to do this nicely. And Tamiya says it exactly right. What do we get? Okay, uh, effervescence in the strong acid will be greater will be of a faster rate okay strong acid will have a faster rate of reaction than we have yeah but you've got eric you're exactly right and it is a faster rate of reaction but how would you determine the rate of reaction you've got to ha actually have a physical thing okay so really, basically, you can say they'd have a faster reaction, 
But, you know, that's not what you would observe. Well, you would observe it, I guess. But what specific thing would you observe in the two beakers or whatever? The specific thing is the effervescence. And so in the stronger acid, the rate of effervescence would be faster than the weaker acid. Okay, let me turn off the sharing now.